cutting bandsaw and it is a wood cutting bandsaw. This particular blade cuts wood and it also will cut acrylic plastic, but it does not cut any kind of metal. Uh, there are saws that are made by the same company that you put a, a flexible hacksaw type blade on and it runs at a lot slower speed than can cut metal, but this one is only for wood and for acrylic plastic. On a bandsaw, it has a continuous band blade that goes around uh, in an oval and the blade is right in here. It is welded together and they occasionally break. Uh, the machine is, is, is really, it's a nice machine, but it's not a do-all machine. It's designed primarily for cutting curves or straight lines if accuracy is not terribly important. Now, the is stored down here, and that's so that uh, there's no, not a lot of blade exposed. And there are, when you look at it, guides behind here. There's a, what's, that's a, a wheel with a ball bearing, and there's some stuff under here. And when you use this machine, probably the only uh, really handle or control you touch is right up in here. And this is so we can move the, what's called the blade guide assembly up, and then we can tighten it so it stays up. Now we're going to come in and we're going to stop the camera and come in and we're going to look at uh, the guard and the blade area and talk about some clearances. You take the test, uh, I get some, usually it's leftover wood, and uh, some that's left over and I will have several pieces usually stored here, and I take on the wood and I draw a curve in here. And your test job is to saw this curve correctly using some relief cuts. Now when we take and use this machine, we're going to cut here. I have to leave, raise the, the assembly. And on the paper test, it says that this guide and guard should be no more than one fourth inch above the wood or plastic. If you have any issues with not knowing one fourth inch, then you need to see me and I can help you read the ruler. My uh, and usually I ask that you have it no more than one eighth inch. The idea is that you cannot slip your fingers in here because when you're using this, uh, nobody intends to cut their fingers, but sometimes you slip in. Now, we have this adjusted. Uh, it's a little more than probably an eighth of an inch above, but it's, it's pretty safe. Now there's still the blade exposure here. And when I saw this curve, and it's not too bad a curve, but I'm gonna call, use what's called relief cuts. And relief cuts, and you don't have to draw the lines in, though some kids want to, where you go straight in and out, and you try to go the shortest distance. Now when you do this, when you go in and out, you have to be careful because you can pull the blade off of its wheel or off of its track. The reason we do this is so as the blade comes here, these pieces break off and give the blade relief. Now this curve isn't too severe. It's, it's really important in a very tight curve. Uh, so I'm gonna turn the saw on and make my relief cuts and then do the actual curve cut. Yeah, I've saw it. I have in here, you know, I, my, I want you to make some relief cuts. I really don't care if you make two or three. You could even do four. Now I'm ready to saw the curve. I'm at a slightly awkward angle for me so I can do it on TV. But as I go, you see that piece comes off. Now because of where the TV camera is, I'm doing it one-handed. I would prefer to have stepped over here probably and, and done it with both hands. Now once I turn this off, on. I turn it off, you notice it takes a few seconds for it to totally stop. And that's when the blade can, can really hurt kids. I've had, in my many years of teaching, a few kids that turn it off, they reach in for these pieces and they nip their finger. Because the blade is not fully powered, it's probably not a gross cut, but any cut is, is not good. Then we have some pieces left over and any pieces left over go into the cutoff box. And the cutoff box is behind the saw. Now, if you're doing a lot of sawing, you may have some pieces on the floor, but when you're done, you do pick those up. One thing, uh, when you did pa your paper test, remember it's, it's a question, how close you get your fingers? Well, that's two inches. 
you keep your fingers, get them no closer than two inches to the blade, and this plastic is not two inches. Two inches is out right in, in, in this distance here. And if you need help, you get a ruler and you measure it. Okay, we're gonna change the camera and we're gonna look at a couple other things that we can do with this saw. Now, this is called a miter gauge and we have the same thing for the table saw. This will help you get a, a, a straighter line. A bandsaw without any guide material, without a, a fence or a miter gauge is primarily for a, a curve type surface. When you use this to cut, you need to draw your lines down here. Now the miter gauge, if you come into here, you notice it's going to hit this guard. So we do have to raise it up and that does expose some more blade. And this particular saw is uh, about as old as your parents and it's a little cranky. So I have this here. I would have a mark down here that I'm going to follow. I can turn this on. I keep my fingers back to it. I turn it off. I wait for the blade to totally stop. Then I can remove my wood. Now when we get into woodworking, accuracy is real important. And this is not the saw that you normally use to make something like a chess or a checkerboard. That needs to be done with a table saw. Uh, this, we, this cutoff type thing that I did can be very good if you're making like a pen on the uh, mini lathe, a wood pen. Uh, it's okay, but it's not 100% accurate. Now another thing we have is a process or kind of cut round stock like a wooden dowel. And we're going to stop it, we'll get a dowel out, and then we'll continue. There is a, a, a thing in, in some material, if you read in how to use machine books on cutting wood dowels. A wood dowel is a round stick, like a broomstick handle. And dowels are extremely dangerous to cut. If you go in the, like this on freehand, you have a blade that is going down. The power is taking it down. You have a surface which is round, and it wants to take its spin like this. And when it spins like that, it's out of control, and you can uh, get a hand or finger pulled into there. And it's, it's real dangerous, and I don't care who you are, how many years of woodworking experience you have, you can get caught that way, and it can be very painful. I, I did it once. I violated my own safety rule, and I was real lucky. And so the safety test from our district says use, use a miter gauge or a V-block. In my shop here at Sylvester Middle School, we do neither one without my permission. And that is, it's just so dangerous. With a miter gauge, it would be like this. Now the V-block that we're talking about is, in our case, a homemade one. And it is this device here. slips on to the guideway this way. We lower this down, but even lowering it down, we, we're still gonna have a fair amount of blade exposure. And then we can go through this way, keeping our fingers back two inches, and you're really putting a lot of pressure on holding this. Now, it's only with my permission, and you would come to me and say, Mr. Fairbanks, I need to cut some round stock, some broomstick handle type stock. Do I have permission to use the V-block on the bandsaw? And uh, I, I'll probably give it to you, but I want to make sure you have it set up right and that I'm in the area when you start so you don't get hurt. Now, long as we are here, I also have another guide for the bandsaw for making wind spirals or the flower baskets. And it has words on it, bandsaw cutting guide for wind spiral. It's also the same thing that we use for uh, the uh, flower basket. This one goes in the way it was designed, and it can, doesn't have to be this way, but you have to turn it, and then you put it down, and then you drop this down, tighten it up, and then you can run your wood through here. So I'm going to turn this off, and uh, we're going to get a piece of wood, and then we'll be right back. This is a piece of pine. We usually are using cedar uh, almost all the time, the wind spirals and the uh, flower uh, baskets are made out of cedar. Cedar is a very good outdoor wood. Uh, this is pine, it's less expensive, but it'll rot faster. So I turn this on, I come in here. OK, 
keeping my fingers back, hands back two inches, and normally we could do one piece after another, but we get strips like this, which work out very nice for the wind spiral or the laminate or the uh, flower basket. Now, in closing, this saw is a, a, a tremendous opportunities for it, but you have to be careful when you're using it that you don't cut yourself. My own personal experience is that most of you have never used a bandsaw, and you start out being very safe. It's when you have used it for a while and you're not intimidated by the blade going around or the noise, and we have this some place down here for what we're cutting, and you're using it, and you're using it, and you look up to see, talk to George or Susie or whoever, and you sometimes stick your finger in the blade. Now that doesn't happen very often, but you're letting your tension span run, change. You have to concentrate on it, whether you use this machine for one day or a hundred days, because you don't want to get cut. Never put your fingers in there when this blade is running or coasting, and uh, if there's any problems, uh, assuming you haven't cut yourself, you turn it off immediately, then you see me. And again, remember my guidelines on cutting round stock. We generally don't do it. If you feel you need to, you gotta see me. We'll take it on a one-by-one, case-by-case basis to be able to do it.